More than 2,000 years ago, the great Greek philosopher Aristotle said, knowing yourself is the beginning of all wisdom, to which today I would add, and the key to living a purposeful and fulfilling life in wholeness. But it wasn't always like this. For over 25 years in my life, I was mostly a human doing rather than a human being. So I was mostly living on autopilot. Then, six years into my corporate job, I finally decided to break free. And breaking free was actually the foundation to then start really crafting my life. And I guess this is why I was invited to speak to you today about the end career paradigm. But, so I was invited to talk about every career is a good career. But I would rather take you through a round-the-world journey that tries to respond to the question whether if every career is a good career. So this, this for me is a big question. I will use these three chapters of my life. And then I will also be sharing with you some of the tools I've been using to craft uh, my life that some consider quite an unconventional one. Although some people a few times have said, oh, she lost the train. Uh, one of my father's friends one day, he said, this was one year ago, oh, poor Katerina, so sad that she lost this amazing career. So I'm going to show you how actually my past has allowed me to live a purposeful and fulfilling life in wholeness. So, since I left high school, most of my decisions were mostly a reflection of society's recipe for success than what I truly wanted for my life. You know, do a bachelor degree at the top university, then straight away do a master's degree, then even before I finished my master, having a job at a great company, and, you know, if I follow this model, I will be successful and happy. The problem was, for most people, I, I had a wonderful career, but then deep inside myself, I didn't really feel happy and fulfilled. And more or less, looked like this. So, hobbies, volunteering as well, and work. And if you see, there's kind of an empty space, and at some point in my life, Unilever, so my job became my identity. That's who I was. But you know, thankfully, and that's why I love traveling, I went to visit my brother in Mozambique, so quite a different context. I was sitting alone in the beach, and I just, it was almost like I was looking to my life in London, where I was at the time, and I was looking at my life as a movie, and I looked at the main actor, and it wasn't myself. So, <laughs> you know, how, how is this possible? How am I letting myself lead a life that I don't feel it's mine? So this was the first step towards becoming fully aware of the situation where I was at. at. And this takes me to my first big reflection that will help me to answer the big question. I would consider my career not to be a good career if I had continued on these autopilot paths. And I'm not saying that it wasn't important, it was, but if I had continued, it wouldn't be a good career, in my opinion. Then, it's the breaking free. And between becoming aware until I actually took action, it took two years. Uh, you know, building the courage, uh, making the decision, and what happened was I started considering options. So what can I do? I can change jobs, I can do a PhD, I had been a teaching assistant at university, and I loved it. I can do an MBA. An MBA is quite common when you want to do a career shift. Or I can travel the world. So I evaluated those options, and I realized that the first three didn't allow me what I really needed, which was time and space to explore, to play, almost like children. You know, I just needed this freedom. 
So I realized the first three didn't allow me this, and then I was left with traveling. But also traveling was not appealing enough in the sense I didn't want to be a tourist for a long period of time. So on this quest to, what am I going to do? One night I went to bed, I was living in London, deeply desiring to find an answer to what am I going to do? And then I had this dream, you know, you're not fully asleep, you are not uh, awake. And, you know, I just pictured this book that said why I decided to do an MLA instead of an MBA. MLA standing for Master in Life Adventures. You know, this is it. I'm going to travel the world whilst I develop different skills, competencies, exploring my passions and talents. I'm going to learn what I want for the time I want, where I want. And I'm going to use the world as a big classroom. So how did I start thinking about this? Blank is a piece of paper. <laughs> and then I just came up with this. I started actually in Lisbon, taking self-defense classes. I was going to be traveling solo for quite some time. And then this was my first stop, living in an ashram in India, in Rishikesh, where I, where I learned about yoga and meditation for the first time in my life. Then I took off to Nepal to work in construction, helping to rebuild schools after the earthquake. Finally, I went to a permaculture farm, learning about natural product making, gardening, the enlightening principles of Buddhism. Then I went to Myanmar, and here I was just a tourist because the MLA also allows that. <laughs> and then I came here. This is Indonesia, Bali. I wanted to have an experience in hospitality. I wanted to try it. So I applied to work as a volunteer at this guest house in exchange of accommodation and food. And uh, then I got there and I said, oh, sorry, we don't need any volunteers. But they didn't know I had been their guest for the past week. And it was quite a coincidence. And then I told them, you know, this is my background. Um, these are all the opportunities I identified for improvement and I can really help you. And they said, oh, you are hired. So I just got a job I had created for myself. So then I stayed two months working as a consultant. Then I went to Australia, where I was road tripping, surfing, and also reading a lot, studying a lot. Um, and it was interesting because I read more books in the past few months than I had read in the last five years. I had time. And this was, was just amazing, supporting all my travels with reading. And at this point, I was supposed to go to New Zealand, Hawaii, LA, Latin America, all amazing. But I had found something new in my life. I was very much interested in spirituality, yoga, and meditation. So basically, I changed eight flights, and I went to Thailand to complete a yoga teacher training. And then after this, before I finished my one-year travels, I decided that I still wanted to, to do or to undergo two adventures. And they would happen in India, the same country where I started. The first adventure had to do with something I came across for the first time in Nepal, and that was Tibetan singing bowls. And I wanted to know more, so I did a teacher training in sound healing. And lastly, the last adventure, and this was interesting, because when I was in Rishikesh, remember, first stop, someone told me about one experience, and my answer was, oh, I would never be able to do that. But then, all my travels, everybody I kept meeting during my travels, just pointed me the way, and almost like a preparation for this last adventure. I spent 10 days in full silence, no reading, writing, talking aloud, to learn Vipassana meditation. This was the toughest, but the most important experience of all. And above all, I realized that for self-knowledge to happen, you don't need to travel the world, although I do believe it really helps. But you do need to create the time and space for it to happen. And so, pretty much, 
my MLA look like this. And one interesting thing about my MLA is that it was very different from what I had initially planned. Because, you know, I got to know myself better. I learned new things about myself. So I realized that actually the MLA, it's not structure, it's flexibility. It's not rules, it's freedom. It's not living on autopilot, it's living deeply in the present moment. It's not comfort zone, it's where magic happens. It's not how many places you visit, but how deep you go in each place you visit. It's not just traveling, it's a transformational journey on the inside that reflects on the outside, and a powerful way to find your true north. And with this comes my second reflection. We need time and space to make conscious choices in our life. And so now I had created a foundation to start crafting my life. So I decided I wanted to live in Portugal, so I came back. And I also decided I need, I, I need time now to, you know, find ways, how, to, how can I use all these tools in my life, how can I integrate the learnings? What professional activities can I undergo? So, you know, still having this freedom to explore. And then, this happened. I was invited to talk at a TEDx, and I will tell you that this is, is as important as all my travels. Not because I'm here talking for 1,500 people, but because to get to this point, I had to deconstruct all the past five years of my life. So I spent two months thinking, you know, how am I going to convey a message that is relevant to the audience, something that they can take with them? And this has completely changed how I saw the MLA, and I actually ended up developing a model for personal development that now I use and follow every year. So right now, I design an MLA every year. And actually, that's what I'm going to share with you. How do I use it? But just before, let me frame the MLA within personal development. So, you know, put it very simplistically, Personal development is a lifelong process of continuous learning. And you might have two approaches. You might have a passive approach, you just let life happen to you, or you might take an active approach. Within the active approach, you know, you choose here and then, it's more of an ad hoc uh, position, instead of a holistic, so looking at your life as a whole, with a purpose. And this is actually where I would put the MLA, because it really looks into all the areas of your life. So how do I do it? So I created a five cyclical step journey to help me design my MLA. And the first step is assessing. Assessing why do I do what I do? Where do I want to go and what do I need to get there? Then, I design my journey. Finally, I go, I learn, I meet people, I develop tools, and then I apply them in, a, in my life or in my career. And very important, I reflect upon all of this. What do I take for the future? This is the only way I guarantee I keep being conscious in the choices I make. Not to stay on this very abstract level, we will go on to step number one, two, very briefly, and then five. 
And I'm going to illustrate it with my, the plan I designed uh, for 2022. So before I take you on this journey, and usually I use a lot reflection maps, what I want to tell you is, for this, you can start with a blank piece of paper. And I have some questions that are relevant for me, might not be relevant for you. The thing is, you have the freedom to create your own questions, your own reflection map. So this is just an example of how I do it. And I also have my team usually doing it, uh, so we can have MLAs and share it along the way. So the first question is, why do I do what I do? And how I respond to this is vocation. I'm putting the talents I believe I have to the service of others. Emotions, passion. So when I do things, I have a lot of excitement, I'm happy. And purpose, the impact I have on other people's life. And for this, of course, there was another, um, another thing I did was when I came back to Portugal was, okay, so uh, what's my mission and how would I call myself? So I came up with my mission as being to facilitate human flourishing, and then decided that I would be called a talent strategist. There was once one person asked me, oh, what do you do? And I said, oh, I do many things. Oh, you do nothing. <laughs> so, you know, there's still some preconceptions. So I came up with this because, again, it would allow me freedom to fit everything I wanted that taps into my mission. So now I'm a talent strategist and I do many things. So then, the, the, the second question is, where do I want to go? And I, uh, I came up with two objectives. One is more abstract, uh, it's more general, to deepen my knowledge, experience, and impact as everything I put under talent strategist, learning experience designer, team leader, speaker, professor, and facilitator. I just want to become better at what I do. And then the second, a more specific one, I want to become presence coach, studying with Patsy Rodenberg, that is one of the best uh, voice coaches in the world. So I had this big objective. I didn't know her at the time, um, but I had it in my mind. And then, what do, I need, what do I need to get there? And I pretty much divide these into three boxes. The first box, what training do I want to undergo? And this can be on the job challenges and formal training. Then what other, and this is very exciting, what other adventures can, can, I got in, can I get involved in, knowing that the world is my classroom? And then finally, what, who can support me? Literature, books, articles, then movies, podcasts, etc. And then people. And this is really important because actually deciding who are the people here has unlocked a lot of opportunities for me throughout the last five, uh, few years. And I'm giving you just you know, a, few, a few examples. These on the job challenges related to my previous job at NovSB Executive Education. I completed them all. Formal training, just two things. One is yet to be started, uh, joining a theater school. And then the other adventures, I, I divided them in three. One has to do with the core of what I do, experience design and delivery, then traveling, and I try to have traveling always in my MLA, because I believe there are certain things it's very difficult for us to learn or acknowledge if we always stay in the same place. And then, and this for me, it's fundamental, what rituals support me? I have daily rituals, I have weekly rituals, and yearly rituals. Because I know this is what keeps me in balance. And finally, just, you know, some books, movies, and then people. First person, my therapist. <laughs> then Patsy Rodenberg and William Shakespeare. You can also follow people who are not yet alive yet. So this is pretty much how I design. And then you can just design how you like. I usually use pictures, so I do visual maps. You can draw, you can write, whatever fits you. 
And finally, step five, as I told you, I think I can do all the, all the, the steps before, but if I don't these, it's very difficult that I truly learn. And here I really like to quote the great American philosopher, considered the father of modern education, John Dewey. He says, learning doesn't come from experience. Learning comes from reflecting on experience. And that is why I told you that TEDx has been a turning point in my life, because I was kind of forced to reflect and realize the importance. And so, you know, again, very gen generic key learnings. So what did, what did I get? What changed inside, outside? Watch outs, alerts, because sometimes things remove me from balance, make me go back to what it was before. So what are the watch outs? Then what else do I want to develop? This is a continuous process. And next steps. You know, very simple, or it, it looks simple. At least my team told me, it's, you know, answering to these kind of questions is not always simple. But as you do it, it will become a habit. And it's really life-changing, because my life is now like this. So I am a lifelong student. I design my MLA every year. I always have these amazing books that support me in my journey. I kept with my hobbies everything that fills me with energy. And then I can put whatever I like as a talent strategist. So basically, my personal development plan waters my purpose-driven career. And just one quick story I wanted to tell. So in, in, a, in a recruitment process that happened not so long ago, um, someone was telling, oh, but this is a, a full-time job. And then I answered, oh, but I'm not a full-time person. <laughs> and what amazing it is for you to have the confidence, the freedom to say this. Also because they need to know people are changing. People want to do different things, different activities. You are third reflection. We are not a job. A job is what our whole being chooses to make out of it. I truly believe in this. So this helps me to get a response to this question. So is every career a good career? Well, I would answer, every career is a good career when chosen by you in consciousness. Bonus, even more when supported by a self-crafted personal development plan. Because this is what helps you to always be conscious because it's very easy to fall on the autopilot. And it's not that sometimes I don't fall, but I have watch outs. So then I know how to come back. So three final messages before, before I finish. The first one has to do with the story about the master and his servant. The servant really wants to prove that the master is fallible. So he has this idea of bringing a bird to the master and he puts uh, his hands behind his back and will ask if the bird is al alive or dead. And then if the master says dead, he shows the bird alive. If it's alive, he kills the bird. So he comes to the, he comes to the, um, to the master and says, Master, is the bird dead or alive? And the master smiles. And he gets agitated. Master, is the bird dead or alive? He smiles. And he answers, my dear servant, the solution is in your hands. So the solution to craft a career, a life that is purposeful, fulfilling, whole, it's, all, it's always in our hands. But I won't tell you it's easy. And I think Benjamin Franklin puts it very well. He says, there are three extremely hard things in life, still, a diamond, and to know oneself. Knowing oneself is hard work, but it's worth it, because it becomes 
a compass. And then, like the lighthouse, only by living in full presence can you become your best career guide and user. To be or not to be, that is the question. Thank you so much.